Hello everyone. It's James again. And today I wanted to make a quick video. Talking about the term not all women are like that. And Aaron Pizzi. First off. There's a term that has been floating around the web for a long time. And probably even before the web. And it's called. Not all women are like that. And what this basically refers back to. When men talk about the issues with women in today's society. And even if they are careful to say. Not all women are like that. You will have women that will reply back in the comment section. Just to make sure they let everyone know they aren't like what is discussed in the video or article. No empathy about the subject matter. No acknowledgement about what is being said. No words and thoughts on how things can be better. It's just statements filled on how they as a woman aren't like what is being described in the video. And how the video maker or blog writer shouldn't generalize. When in reality they never did generalize. And they clearly stated they aren't saying all. However. They are or might be saying most. And this will tie in with Aaron Pizzi in just a moment. The reason why they are saying most is because the anti-male groups over the years have done a bang-up job in changing how all of us live our lives. You see. We talk about hypergamy and all the bad that comes with it. But the fact is. And not many people talk about this. Even those that are very knowledgeable about hypergamy. The fact is hypergamy has changed greatly since these anti-male groups have rose to power. And they are truly in power. Make no mistake. At least in this world. As they are no match for the most high. Here's an example. You have a working class. And even slightly lower class in terms of money. Neighborhood. And we are talking years and years ago. You have an attractive man. That is working hard at whatever job he has. He goes ice skating on the weekend. Or out dancing. Or whatever they might do in their part of town to be social. And he soon meets a woman near or close to where he lives. They start dating. They get married. And they stay married until they are dead. They have children. Grandchildren. The entire family situation right. Well. Though hypergamy was still going on then. It was different because of the rules society placed on its people to have a civilized society. You see. I've mentioned big companies and how they operate before in my past videos. And how you can use these examples to what is going on in our world today. You see. When a big company wants their workers to thrive. Like when they first opened their doors years and years ago. They would give their workers a lot of perks and a reason to stay loyal to them. And work for them their entire life. Well look at how the people were back then. Yes. I know. Not perfect. People were still narcissists back then too. There were still abusers back then. But. You had a better shot at meeting someone decent and good. Because this behavior of being disloyal and using people wasn't celebrated. What was celebrated was your word is your bond. Especially amongst men. And women were told to not ditch a man when he's in trouble. Now did bad things still happen? Yes. They did. However. Unlike today. It was greatly frowned upon. So to backtrack a moment. You have this good looking guy out at the ice rink. And he meets a young lady he finds attractive. And she finds him attractive too. She sees he's a hard worker. But he's not making a lot of money at all. But he is responsible and hard working. You see. This is what normal hypergamy looks like. And based on all of this. She finds that he's a good match. The thing is. And I will be talking about this more in the future. This woman has no outside influences. And what I mean by that. Negative influences. Like television shows telling her to leave her man and run around wild and free to do this and do that. Because the world is her oyster. No. Society said loyalty is a good thing. And the reason why society or the puppet masters were preaching this message. 
is there were some back then that did have a good heart and wanted to pass it on to others. Through their stories. And entertainment. But the evil puppet masters wanted to build up society for their sake. Not ours. And in order to do that. They need strong families. So they made sure these families were intact to build up society. Now like the company that is trying to dismantle itself for financial reasons. The perks are gone. And the workers are mistreated on purpose so they will just up and quit on their own. Well that's what's going on in society. The puppet masters are now preaching divorce. Unbiblical marriage licenses. And hook up with everyone you want. And the list goes on and on. Also society can unravel. And we and the useless eaters can just go away. As they don't need as many of us as there are anymore. Now they do need some of us for narcissistic supply and other things. But they don't need the number of us that exists. So they are preaching a different message than that was preached in the past to make us go away on our own. And part of that is the alteration of hypergamy. Because though women have always been hypergamous. There was a time. That a poor man and a poor woman could marry and build a life together. And that kind of life was normal. Now most. Again not all. But most women because of what is being pumped in society. And the level of options they have. Are only looking for the top 10% of men. Which means that if a man has a normal job. A job in years past that he could have held his head up high and felt like a good provider is nothing in the eyes of most. Not all but most women in the western world today. Which means. These women want nothing to do with such a man. And if they do have a relationship with such a man. They will be quick to leave him if she has a better option. Again. This isn't normal hypergamy. Because there are many women that in years past that stayed with broke men. Or men that lost their jobs. And this new hijacked form of hypergamy was given to us by the puppet masters. And implemented by the anti-male groups that have been pushing their warped ways of life on us for years. And because while all of this has been happening. There really hasn't been a lot of women over the years that have stood up and said. Hey. Wait a minute. This isn't right. And they let it just happen. Happen to the men in society. Even their own sons. However. I must say. Usually when such a woman has a change of heart. And they start fighting the system. It's usually when it's too late. It's usually once the system has gotten a hold of their son. Or grandson. Or even their father. But they didn't stand up before that. Because for one. Standing up is scary. Because we all want to protect ourselves. Especially for most women. As going against the narrative or the world can have consequences. But the internet has been around for a while. And there have only been a handful of serious dedicated women to speak up about what is wrong. However. There have been some women that have just jumped on the bandwagon. Or at least that's what it may seem. And I'm not here judging anyone. Because I think we need more women speaking out about what is wrong in the world. Especially regarding men and women relationships. But the reason why men get upset when they see this new trend is because they think. Where the heck were you when we were being destroyed? Now that men are walking away from you. Now you want to stand up. I see how it is. Because though there are some women out there that really do feel bad about what is going on. And found their courage to speak up. There are a lot of women that don't want to lose their power over men. And they feel like they are. So they are trying to hoover men back into the narcissistic abuse. And that's why you will hear many men say. There is no such thing as a Nawalt. However. There are a few of us that know this isn't true. And that unicorns are rare. But they are out there. And their tune doesn't change from minute to minute. And they say the truth even if the truth isn't popular. And they have true empathy in their heart for others. And an example of that is Erin Pizzi. I've talked about her numerous times. And I will continue to talk about her over and over again. 
This woman took on bomb threats over speaking the truth. And guess who ran to her rescue when this happened? No one. Not the wealthy men that fund women's groups. Nope. Not the average working man. Not the average woman. Nope. She just had to pick up her belongings and leave her home country for her own safety. Now did she have her supporters? Yes. But it wasn't something big enough to make a big difference. Because if that was the case, we would be living in a very different world right now wouldn't we? But I do call Aaron Pizzi and not Walt. Because even when it was the hardest thing to do to stand up for what was and is right. She did it. She did it. And she still does it to this very day. Her tune doesn't change. She hasn't jumped on a new bandwagon. She deeply deeply cares about what she's talking about with others. And it shows. The fruit her tree produces is good fruit. But here's the thing. She doesn't run around saying she's a unicorn. She doesn't run around saying. Well I'm not like that. I want you to think about how often she interviews men about issues regarding women being abusive. And try to find in there where she points out that she's not like that. You just need to find the right woman and you will be okay. No. No way. She's very frank and honest to tell men. The game is rigged. And the courts are by and large against them. And in this. She still acknowledges women can and do find themselves in such situations as well. She doesn't leave out abused women. Which shows her love for decency and fairness. But she knows as she's seen firsthand that by and large. The system of these people that used to be her friends. But they threatened her life once she disagreed with them. Their goal is to destroy relationships between men and women. And they want to make it so men have no rights in our society. Then you take a look around you. And you can actually see they are successfully implementing this very agenda. And the reason why they are able to do so. Is for two reasons. Some people just don't want to be bothered. They don't want to stand up as standing up is hard to do for some. The other reason is. For many. Not all. But many women in our society. They love the perks of being protected or a protected class. It's like being given a license to speed when everyone is forced to drive the speed limit. Or some sort of diplomatic immunity. Even if some of these women are someone decent. They don't want to lose this perk. In case at some point in their life. They need to call upon it. Even if that means society collapsing as a result. But in the mix of it all. From the very beginning we have Aaron Pizzi. And her words are the same then as they are now. No changing up. Unless it's because of growth and learning something new. But still the message is the same. No bandwagon. No nothing. But with that said. Yes. We know about Dr. Helen Smith which is a great woman. And I talk about her too in a great way. But please name another Aaron Pizzi for me. One that is still around and still talking the same message as they were before. Someone you can see is loyal and decent and they won't drop the loyalty or decency for no one. That's right. She's it. She's really the only one. And I say that not disrespecting other women. That speak the truth. Such as Dr. Helen Smith. But Aaron Pizzi is the only one that has the long track record. Of decades after decades of standing up for what is right. And when we talk about narcissism. We always talk about time. Time in getting to know someone. And that eventually the narcissist's actions and words won't match up. But the person that is producing good fruit. Will continue to produce good fruit. Even many decades later. So yes. Aaron Pizzi is a na Walt. But just because she is doesn't mean they are common. Because the Bible talks about finding good women is a good thing. But they are as rare as a ruby. And I will tell you MGTOW guys. If you sit back and do nothing. They are going to come for you. And there are some in the ranks of MGTOW that have said hey. You need to link up with the MRAs. 
normal people. Anyone you can to get a victory. Because if you just sit back and do nothing they will come for you. And as I've mentioned before. If you get one victory on this beast system. You can set a precedent. And one strong precedent can be used on another case that is similar. And then another and another. Until the system is destroyed. And Aaron Pizzi is someone you should be interviewing on your channel. She's in her 80s. And she still has a strong message. Spread her message while you can. Because the more some of you bigger MGTOWs interview her. The more eyes will open to what is really going on around us. Because I've heard that a woman can't be the head of a men's rights or MGTOW organization. And to that I tend to agree. However. There is one woman that I would trust to lead. And that is Erin Pizzi. With that said. I hope you had a blessed day. And until next time. Bye for now. And be good to yourself.